I'm Gene Delasala. We're here at the 2008 Audioholic State of the CE Union, and we are here with Chris Kiriakakis. How are you Good doing, you. Chris? Good to see you. Good seeing you. So, Chris, what is new with Odyssey today? I know you guys have been doing Pro EQ for a while. Um, it's in all the Denon receivers. It's working its way into a lot of other receiver manufacturers as well. Can you tell me what's Odyssey doing in 2008 and 2009? Uh, so we released the uh, Pro version 3.0 at Cedia, and that was in response to many feature requests from our uh, professional installers. Uh, the new features include the ability to load uh, previous measurements and save measurements so you can reload them uh, later. Um, and also a very desirable feature was the ability to uh, edit the target curve so that you can produce either a house curve of your liking or to put in or take out specific uh, characteristics that was not possible before. So we have a graphical editor that allows you now to uh, customize the, uh, the target curve. Now how do you access this um, editor? Is it through a PC when you plug it into your receiver? Uh, the installer in the installer kit, the Odyssey installer has the um, software that runs on their laptop and uh, it, in it is the application that lets you do the calibration and when you're finished there's an editing page that lets you access the, uh, the graphical editor. So Chris, we got this guy here vegging out in front of a Grand Prix race with dynamic EQ or dynamic volume. What is that all about? Yes, this is our latest technology. Uh, there's a really interesting story behind that. Uh, two or three years ago when uh, Tom Holman was uh, sitting at home watching movies, uh, he had a thought, why is it that I'm watching a movie at home that is professionally recorded and yet I still have to constantly manipulate the remote control to adjust for things that are too loud or too soft. And Tom spent his life in the movies and has never had to do that. So what is it about uh, that at home, the home environment? And what we found was that the content that is made for very high dynamic range environments and systems like movie theaters doesn't translate well to home theaters even if you have the best uh, equipment. So some translation needs to happen. In the past this was addressed by people trying to put limiters and compressors to try to control the dynamic range. But those have some very serious problems. Uh, they don't know how to react correctly and they cause what's called pumping. Things are too soft and they raise them up and then suddenly it gets loud and they bring them back down. And that causes artifacts called pumping or breathing. So what we did was to go back to the professionals and we have access to many award-winning uh, recording engineers due to our location and the cinema school at USC right. and Tom. And we brought them into the lab and said, okay, your task is to manipulate your mix with the fader on the console so that you can strain the dynamic range to fit within a home environment. Imagine your kids are sleeping next door, redo your mix. And we brought in dozens of them and recorded not only what the content that was being played was, but their actions, we electronically recorded their actions on the fader. This created about a seven or eight terabyte database uh, which became the model that we threw into a, a mathematical simulation to try to, as Tom calls it, reverse engineer human action. Why were they moving the fader? How fast were they moving it? When were they not moving it? Right. And from there, we created a model that can be extrapolated to any content. So it's based on a professional adjusting their mix without compromising the quality of the mix, but just constraining it so that it fits within a dynamic range uh, limit. From that model, uh, we created dynamic volume. Uh, we optimized the code, and we now have it available in uh, shipping in uh, almost 20 products out there in the market with a lot more coming out. And so that's what we're demonstrating here at the show today. Okay, so Chris, we're, you know, we got all this great equipment here. We got, I see we got SVS speakers. We've got a Denon receiver. We've got your Odyssey Pro kit. Yep. You're going to be demonstrating multi q as well as dynamic volume, correct? Yes, that's right. Yes, we're going to be showing all of our uh, technologies. We have some demonstrations to show what you can do when you take a set of really good speakers and put them in a not so good room. That's what MultiQ addresses. It's really a, a problem that many face in the home. Your, your room should be treated, uh, but not everybody has the luxury of, of doing that with acoustical treatments. Uh, if you treat the room, the quality that you achieve is even higher with Odyssey. But if you don't treat the room, you get a huge improvement as well. So that's uh, multi-Q. Uh, and you're going to be able to switch back and forth so people can hear the benefit real time? Yes, that's, that's right. We have a, a switch, uh, pick some demo material and, and uh, turn it on and off to show both the effects of uh, multi-Q, but also uh, dynamic EQ. 
Right. So let me talk about dynamic EQ briefly. Uh, it's actually part of dynamic volume, but it's a separable piece. So dynamic EQ addresses the problem of what happens when you turn the volume down either automatically by dynamic volume or manually just because at home you don't want to listen so loud. Mixes in Hollywood are created at a reference level uh, that is actually uh, too high for civilians, as we like to call it. Uh, most people at home listen about 10 to 20 dB below reference level, Hollywood reference. And that's fine, but what happens is our hearing doesn't translate that way. So when, you, at, when a decision about the balance between lows and highs was made at high volume levels by the people who made the content, and you, you lower the volume, our ears perceive that balance completely differently. Right. Years ago, this was called loudness. It was a loudness control button or tied to the volume control. The problem is it had, it had two fundamental drawbacks. One was it was based on the wrong psychoacoustic curve. Fletcher and Munson, basically. Yes. Fletcher and Munson were researchers at uh, Bell Labs in the early 30s. Uh, they did all this research to understand how human hearing changes with, with volume. What is forgotten, if you go back and read their papers, they were working for the telephone company. Mm -hmm. They were solving the problem for headphones, not for loudspeakers in a room. And limited band with 200 hertz to 4 kilohertz. Exactly. So that data, although useful to understand the problem, is really not very useful if you try to apply it to loudspeakers with wide dynamic range in mm -hmm. a room. So we went into the lab um, at USC where we, where Tom and I have a research lab, and we did a lot of uh, experiments with human listeners. Uh, and understood better what the curves should be. So starting with a better set of curves is, is a key. The second problem that loudness controls had in the past was they had no reference. Even if you have the right curves, if I hand them to you, you don't know where you are on those curves to right. be moving up and down from. Well, multi-Q calibration that has to be run before dynamic EQ gives you an absolute reference level because the microphone is calibrated. So now you know for minus 10 on your volume control corresponds to so many dB SPL. That way you know how to move up and down on the, on the curves. The third feature that we added was, uh, let's say you have a passage of music that has loud and soft parts, and then you turn the volume down. Well, the soft part is on a different curve than the, than the loud part, perceptual curve. So it actually needs more correction than the loud part. So that means you have to know at every instant what the perceived loudness of the content that's playing is. So dynamic EQ has built in a loudness estimator, human perception, uh, loudness approximation in, into every channel and monitors the content as it's playing moment by moment. And so it's like a smart, smart loudness control, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The final thing that we discovered was, again, working with the Hollywood mixers, uh, we, we found that they turn the volume down. One of the, the first thing they complain about is the bass that disappears, and that's human perception our sensitivity in the bass goes down faster. But then they said, hey, what happened to my surrounds? And so in working with them, we found that our perception of loudness from the back is different than our perception of loudness from the front. Right. And actually, it falls off faster from the back. And so based on there, we said, OK, we'll adjust the surround fader so that you maintain surround impression. Mm -hmm. And we, by monitoring a number of them to see what they were doing as a function of volume, we came up with a model that adjusts the surround level as you turn the master volume down. So that's, that's dynamic EQ. It's tied into dynamic volume because whether it's you turning the volume down or the system automatically turning the volume down to, con to constrain the dynamic range, you still need to maintain the, the mix as it was intended. So they're, they're tied together. So in a, in a nutshell, you're trying to give that reference level experience at all volume levels. That's exactly right. That's right. right. And that's what's been missing to, from most home theaters today because people just can't bear to listen at reference levels. It's yeah. too loud. I sympathize. My parents and family, they all like to listen to it low. And yeah. But, well, Chris, it was great hearing about this. We're looking forward to hearing the demo. Good. And thanks for being part of the show. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Okay. Thanks.